Hello everybody, Kurt Berglund back with you and wishing you a, first of all, a very happy new year and I hope everybody's doing okay out there, taking good care of yourself, um, stressful time of year and uh, I get that. Hopefully we can bring you some information and entertainment uh, this coming year that will uh, make things a little bit better. Uh, today I have... Uh, information for you. We have a brand new version of the game called Baseball Classics. Uh, this is the deluxe version. That's what it's called. Baseball Classics already has a standard version and a premium version. And this is the deluxe version. It is uh, less than a month old. Uh, and as, as I as we uh, premiere this episode, uh, this is uh, the deluxe game that they have. What I want to do in this video is to uh, show you the game components, talk with you about how it works, and uh, not a full-blown demo yet, but I'm going to do a few batters so that you can see how the batter-pitcher interaction takes place. So there's a lot to get to. Uh, if you have questions, please ask in the comments below. I'm not an expert in the deluxe game, certainly, but I'm learning. And uh, if I don't cover something that you'd like me to get to, please let me know. I'm also going to put the link to the website for Baseball Classics in the description for the video in case you want to follow up and take a look. One of my goals for you is to uh, give you the information that you need to make good decisions about your gaming dollar. And so I'm going to lay it out there for you. And ultimately, of course, it's your call. Um, but with all that said, thank you for subscribing to my channel. I need your subscriptions to keep my channel going, my friends. And I do appreciate that very much. All right, let's let's get to Baseball Classics Deluxe. Baseball Classics Deluxe comes in a very space saving type of box. Uh, I'm putting a pen on top of it so you can get an idea of the dimensions. Um, and everything that you need to play this game is in this box. However, you also have, uh, when you buy this, you get access to the online rule book. And that may be useful to you if you have not played baseball classics before. You see here that we have the Deluxe Edition, and they're saying for ages eight and up, which I think is uh, about right. Um, I certainly think eight, nine, ten-year-olds can handle this game. Um, at least most of them that I know could. The card set that comes with this first batch of in the deluxe game is the all-time old-timers game. And we're going to talk more about the players that are included in the set in just a few minutes. Uh, they're going to be releasing more cards to go with this. I don't know if they're going to be seasons or, or individual teams or what that's going to look like. I haven't been able to figure that out yet. Um... So, uh, with all that said, you open the box, and there's a few things you notice right away. The first thing is that if you have not played baseball classics before, they've updated their die. So you, instead of a binary die with a zero and a one, which is what they used to ship you, now you get a pitcher result with a winding with a pitcher winding up, and you get a hitter result with the um, batter swinging the bat, and depending upon which one of these pops up with your roll, that's going to determine the, the player card that you look at for the outcome. The cards themselves are, and what makes this game different, is that the cards themselves are on a grid, and you will see uh, what the cards look like in just a few minutes, and this is for the red column and the blue die is for the blue column. So it's all very easy to keep track of. 
Uh, in the first four cards of the box, you get what they're calling a gameplay overview. Um, you get an awful lot of extras with this from the online purchase. Um, and so you need to check those out after you buy, but uh, a number of things come with this, including uh, a, even a, at least in the first order, the first batch of orders, you get a, uh, a uh, sort of a proxy manager to manage against uh, with uh, a number of pages to that document. These are sort of the basics of baseball classics. There's four cards. There's probably enough information on these cards to get you rolling. And they also have this website. And this website leads you to the uh, directions for the game. So if you're not familiar with baseball classics, this link would get you the download to the directions. All right, when you play the deluxe game, unlike when you play the premium game, but like when you play the, uh, um, I'm sorry, unlike when you play the standard game, but very much like when you play the premium game, you use the play action stimulator, simulator, stimulator. Uh, and the play action simulator is uh, designed to do a couple things. The first thing is, it's your first roll with every batter. There is a code on the back that tells you what each of the symbols means. This is the bases empty card that you would use, no matter who was at bat. This is your first roll. All right, so for example, uh, if you roll a red four and a blue one, you're going to get an RD outcome. And you say, well, what's RD? You flip it over and you have a rain delay and there are rules for what to do with that as well. So it's that kind of thing you get. This is your first roll for each at bat. And we'll deal with that more when I demo a few at bats. Then for the play action simulator, if there's any lead runner on base, you check their running rating and you match it up with the color code and depending upon what that color code is, that tells you what card to use. So if you have the fastest type runner on base, they would have a green triangle. This would be your play action simulator roll. And then once you're clear of this, then you go to a second roll, which resolves the at bat. And we'll show you that in a few minutes. One of the things about uh, baseball classics is the defense, the way defense is handled. Now, if you play the, sta the um, standard game, you have a team defense. And the team defense chart is one that is the only one that you refer to. So uh, that's kind of hard to explain, but it's a point system in the standard game that is kind of like APA basic, where you add up a number of points for each defender and you consult a chart. That's not what you do here. In the deluxe game, there are there is individual fielding uh, and it's based on the, the batter outcome role that you get and it tells you who gets the ball whether it's an infield play or an outfield play on the back of the card. Infielders tells you what types of plays they get. Outfielders tells you what types of plays they get. All right, so we'll come back to this in a few minutes as well. To resolve an error after each play, you're gonna roll and consult this chart. So the first thing you're gonna do from the initial roll to resolve the at bat, it will tell you who got the ball, who fielded the ball. And I'll give you some examples of that. Then after you decide who, after you determine who fielded the ball, whether it's an infielder or an outfielder, then you roll 
And this is the final roll of the at-bat to determine if an error has taken place, and if it has, how many bases do they get? So, you start your at-bat with the play-action simulator. You roll there. Then you resolve the at-bat, part of which is using that roll to figure out where the ball went. And then, once you do that, you're rolling a third time to determine the individual fielding error chance. And if there is an error, it'll tell you by the color coding and the number how many bases they get. There is a key. This is the legend for the um, team fielding option which you can choose to use in the deluxe game if you want to. I have not used it in the deluxe games that I have played because it doesn't seem to fit very well for me. However, if you haven't played baseball classics before, this is a great way to start. So you add up your fielding points and then your color coding tells you if an error has taken place and you go from there but I will be using the individual fielding in the game. All right, or in the demos that we do, we'll look at the individual fielding. All right, next, each player in the game is rated for their bunting ability. They get a colored triangle that reflects the, their skill at laying down a bunt. If you choose to lay down a bunt after you use the play action simulator, your second roll is to this card. In a bunt situation, you would not refer to the defense card. You would just use the play action simulator and the bunt card. And if you look at the bunt cards that we have, there's a green one for the best bunting you can have. Blue is the second best, and there's the bunt card for that with the legend at the top. Third best is yellow bunting rating, and then fourth best is the red. These are the worst bunters. All right. Now, if you are taking an extra base in... Uh, Baseball Classics, one of the things that you'll see is that each of the players, and I'm going to pull one out here now to show you. I uh, should have done that before. Here's Duke Snyder. You see that Duke Snyder has a bunting rating, which is blue, so he's the second best type of bunter. Steel rating is blue. And his running rating is yellow. And of course, yellow is the third best of anything. The, the key goes green is the best, um, blue is second best, yellow is third best, and then red is the worst. So you have a steel rating, but you also have a base running rating. Well, the base running rating charts look like this. And if you're taking the extra base, uh, you would consult this based on the colored triangle that your player has. So if we come back to Duke Snyder, we see his running rating is yellow. So we would look, if Duke was trying to score from first on a double, we would look at this uh, card and roll to see if Duke makes it or not. So there is green. There's blue, there's yellow, and there's red for base running. All right, so those that's base running. There is an injury chart if you play with injuries. And the injury chart is consulted 
when there is a white outcome on the batter card. So if these are the white outcomes, so anytime one of these is rolled, you have a possible injury. That's how that works. Next is the stealing rating. And the stealing rating is again based on the color coding on the card. Uh, so if we come back to Duke Snyder, Duke Snyder is a B base dealer. I'm sorry, a blue base dealer. And so we would grab his base dealing card that has the blue triangle. All right. Red base, there is no such thing as a red base dealer. Red, if you're red, you can't go. You don't have any stolen bases. Last but not least, before we get to the player cards, there are pitcher batting cards of every description. And the pitcher batting cards, again, are based on the triangle system. So if we look at a pitcher, for example, Let's take Warren Spahn. He has a batting rating of yellow. So we would grab our batting rating card that has the yellow triangle. Now there are several versions of this. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm not really getting why there are several versions, but this is one of the yellow batting rating cards. Maybe you get to choose. I don't know. I couldn't find it in the rules. So maybe you got some, some flexibility there. But this is the yellow card. So this might be the one that Warren Spahn uses. Oh, I think I know why. Oh, maybe I don't know why. Oh, I do know why. Never mind. This is for which hand the batter bats with. So for example... Warren Spahn is a left-handed batter. And so this is the card he would use because this corresponds with his left-handed batting. All right, so all that's said and done. Now let's look at the interaction between the batter and the pitcher. We're going to bring up Duke Snyder again. And I'm going to grab a... Uh, American League pitcher. How about Billy Pierce? Old White Sox left-hander. All right. So, we start with our play-action simulator. We're going to suppose that this is the start of an inning. And to demo this, we're going to roll our three dice we don't actually need the pitcher batter die yet. We're going to roll our two dice and see if we get anything on the play action simulator before they face off. This is a roll of a red seven and a blue zero. Here's the red seven right here. The blue zero is here and it's a green result on the play action simulator to get the at bat started. What is the green result? Well, the green result means batter swings away, or as the kids like to say, BSA. So the vast, vast, vast majority of the play action simulator when the bases are empty is just a straight green result. There are some others, but you're probably gonna go to the batter pitcher cards next. And in fact, that's what we're doing. Now, there is not a split system in the deluxe game. So what you're doing is you're either going to one or the other of these, and this die will tell you which way you're going. So you shake the dice and you get your outcome. Now, this is the pitcher winding up. That tells you we're gonna look at the pitcher's card. These dice tell you what column and row we're gonna look at. So the four tells us which row. That's the four row. And the nine 
the blue nine is the nine columns. So this is the combination here, F-O. So we have a result on the pitcher's card of a red four and a blue nine get a, giving us an F-O. Now we're using the individual fielding. And so I know what you're saying. You're saying to me, Kurt, that's great. But who gets the F-O? Well, the first thing we do is we look on our infielder play gameplay chart and we look for the types of plays that the infielder might take. Geo, geo with the star, double play, triple play, pop out, line out, wild overthrow, first base with the star, bunt. No, I don't see FO on here anywhere. All right, so we gotta look on the back. Outfielder play game play chart. Outfielder plays FO, there it is. And FO in parentheses, which is not what this is. And some others as well. All right, now, now, to determine who got the chance, this is a fly out, we know that, but we don't know who got it yet. So the first thing we're gonna do is to say, okay, is this off the batter die or the pitcher die? Well, if we look up here, we know it's off the pitcher die. Now, we add these up. Four plus nine makes 13. Remember, friends, there's three kinds of people, those that can add and those that cannot. And four plus nine makes 13, so we're gonna look in the pitcher die in the odd column. Now you say, okay, how do I know which result in the odd column it is? Ah, you come back to your red die and you look here and it's at a fly out to left field. The left fielder is going to make the catch. Okay, so now you're saying to yourself, well, wait a minute. Does he make the catch? How do I know he made the catch? Well, the truth is we don't know yet that he made the catch, so we have to do a check. Now we have a fly out to left field. We have individual fielding. Here's our left fielder behind Billy Pierce. It's Ted Williams. He is a blue outfielder. So we grab our individual fielding gameplay chart. And we're going to make our third and final roll for this at bat. We're looking for blue results. If there are blue results, Williams has made an error. We're going to roll two dice one more time for our, col for our row and our column. And we're looking for blue outcomes. Okay. Now, we have a zero on the red die, and we have a one on the blue die, which is blank. Blank, if we look at our legend up here, blank means no error. So Teddy ball game held on to the ball. One gone in our first inning of play. That's all you need to do. It goes play action simulator, first roll, Second roll resolves the at-bat, including where the ball goes. And the third roll determines if an error has occurred. Now notice, errors can occur on hits. So you could have a hit plus an error in this game. All right, now let's bring up a new batter for Billy Pierce to face from the National League. And we'll do Pete Rose. Now I wanna point out something else on the cards. Um, 
they give you recommendations for where the batter where the player should play in the field and where they should go in the order and now you don't have to use those but one of the things baseball classics has um, publicized is that they give you this feedback now they also do something else on the back of the card they give you statistics they give you in in this set of course these are all-time old timers so they're giving you career aggregates here but they're also giving you some charts of, of what they're calling sabermetrics these are more advanced statistics so they do these for the position players um, and they also do them, I'll show you Billy Pierce. They also do them for the pitchers. So they're telling you they can use them in start or relief. And he's an ace starter. And here are his career totals and his sabermetric numbers. All right, so we're going to have a showdown here between Rose and Billy Pierce. Let's suppose, for this, just for the fun of it, we had a runner on first base now. And that that individual was fast. So for the purposes of our uh, uh, demo here, our little demo... Uh, I will grab a fast base dealer, and we will use him at first base. Let's see if I can find one. Um, oh, I know it will be one. We'll, we will say that on this particular play, Ty Cobb is at first. You'll notice that he is a green base dealer. All right, so there's his stealing rating. Now, on this play action simulator, it says, we use this card, reference depending upon the steal rating is green on base and most likely to be a threat to steal or score. Okay, so Cobb is at first, Rose is at bat. We start with the play action simulator. I don't even need the picture result. All right, so we roll an eight, seven, eight, and then a seven. Now this is an SI. And you say to yourself, well, what is an SI? The SI is in purple. So we look at our legend. We have spectator interference. Uh, so, and there's a whole, there's a couple of things that follow from having spectator interference. That's just one of the things that can happen. But obviously, Rose is going to be safe on that. Let's choose another one. Let's roll another one and see what comes up. We have a nine on the red and a one on the blue, which is green. So, again, whenever we have a green result, we go to the pitch. All right, so now it's Pierce pitching to Rose. It's another pitcher result. Yeah, let's change it. Let's make it on Rose's card. Let's say we did this. It's a batter result, and we have a five and a zero. Five is our row. Zero is our column, and it's an L-O. L-O. All right. So now we come to our card here on outfielder play. Outfielder play, FO, FO, first, second, third, for single, double, triple, homer. No, no LO. Infielder plays, GO, GO, DP, TP, PO, LO. There's the LO. Now we're going to use our same role to figure out who got it. Now we're on the batter die, so we're on this side of the card. Five plus zero makes five, so that's an odd result. And we use the red five to determine who got it. So it's a line out to second base. 
if we had rolled something like this, a catcher getting the ball on the line out, it goes to the other position listed. So instead of, if it's a line out, you can't have a line out to the catcher, so instead you use the first baseman. And that would resolve the play, except we have to look at the error check. All right, so we know it's a line out to second. And the second baseman for the American League I just grabbed this. We'll say it's Joe Cronin. He is a yellow at second base. So we roll. Now we're looking for yellow results. And we had a four, red four, blue six. It's a white outcome, no error. And that's it. So let's review one last time. We start uh, in Baseball Classics Deluxe, which looks like this. We start with the Play Action Simulator. Our first roll goes here. Our second roll resolves the at-bat with this die telling us if we look at the pitcher card or the batter card. In that roll, we get a combination of red and blue dice that will put us on one of these grids. As soon as we determine what happened on the grid, then we go to the infielder or outfielder play chart and determine who fielded the ball, regardless of what happened, whether it was a hit or an out. Then we make our third roll of the at-bat to determine the whether an error took place. And then we move to the next batter. And that's it. Now you're asking, who comes in the all-time, all-time, all-time old-timers game? Uh, one of the things that you're able to order is a set of cards for the eight men out. Now, I don't know why this is a subset. You're going to ask me, Kurt, why are the eight men out a subset? And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know the answer to that question. However, I did order them, and here they are. So they are, in, they are available as an add-on to the set. The basics of the set are uh, some of the greats of... I would say primarily the first, I don't know, 60 or 70 years of the 20th century. Um, and you get, I believe it's four pitchers per team. There's a second set that adds uh, seven pitchers per team, I believe, or six. And so it kind of fills out the team. You don't have to buy it if you don't want to, but you, and it gives you a list, a roster, I believe, on the website that you can look at. But this is a quick run through of who all is in the set. And that's what it looks like. This is the Baseball Classics Deluxe Game. It is in the middle between the standard game and the premium game in terms of complexity and I would say in terms of playing time, but my playing time is right around 25 minutes right now uh, for this game. Uh, I'm up to, I'm in the teens somewhere of games played, I think 15 or 16 games that I've, um, that I've done myself and I'm right around 25 minutes. Hope this has been helpful. Check out the website in the video description and don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel, my friends. Have a wonderful day. I'll do another demo of this for a full game in the future. If you'd like to see one, please let me know. 
in the comments below. Have a good day. So long, everybody.